Welcome in to the Fun Astrology Podcast. Thomas Miller, thank you so much for joining us. We are going to talk financial astrology today. I've got a couple of quick announcements. Hope you will join us Monday for our little pop-up reading. You know, we have Zoom. We're going to be doing it on Zoom, and you might want to get in there a little early, I guess. We're going to start at 7.30 Eastern, but just in case, I have no idea how many people are going to pop in. We're going to go over the month of April and then talk book club and just a general astrology conversation. Not going to be a chart reading per se, but with the, what the book club folks are doing, you'll kind of get a drift of how April might look based on what they're bringing up. Tomorrow, I'm going to release a special interview with Liz Grace Christie, one of my special podcast listeners. She was up here in North Carolina in August, and she has... <laughs> Liz is just incredible. She first contacted me, if you remember, those of you who have been listening for a while, about Ophiuchus and should Ophiuchus have a place in our zodiac. So you get right there that Liz Grace is on the cutting edge of everything coming forward in astrology, and she's going to be one of our readers. We're going to talk to her tomorrow. I hope you'll catch that. Now let's turn our sights to MMACycles.com. Ray Merriman, the financial astrologer who has been doing this since about as long as Robert Glasscock, the late 60s, started his newsletter about a, 10 years later after he kind of figured out what he was going to do with this, and he has become the dean of financial astrology. We had the month end and quarter end yesterday in the markets, and it showed. Let's see what Ray has to say. This is free, and it's from MMACycles.com, the weekly newsletter at the top. This article from Reuters, March recorded the worst U.S. bank failures since the 2008 crisis. But that did not stop some investors from snapping up battered financial stocks to bolster their bets on the sector's long-term health, fund flow data showed. Now, that's despite both funds plunging about 29% in March as the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank triggered fears of a contagion and doubts about the sector's stability. And then this clever quote from National Geographic. The article is entitled, What Archaeology is Telling Us About the Real Jesus. The quote, Absence of evidence isn't evidence of absence an old archaeological adage. Now the newsletter. What banking crisis? Wasn't all the evidence there for a banking crisis? Answer? Only in the land of Neptune and Pisces, where realities don't depend on evidence as much as intuition and imagination. However, in time, their intuition may prove correct, even if their timing is premature. All the fear of two weeks ago that the global financial and banking systems were on the verge of a massive collapse suddenly evaporated. It was so Neptunian. The Sun, Mercury, and Neptune were conjunct in Pisces and in a square aspect to Mars on March 15th and 16th, with Venus squaring Pluto as well, right at the height of the hysteria, Neptune and Pisces. Now, two weeks later... Several global stock indices are on a two-week torrid rally, and much of the recent decline has been recovered. This is what markets look like when an MMA three-star geocosmic critical reversal combination occurs at the end and the beginning of a primary cycle. The pattern was nearly the same throughout the world. That is, most indices formed a primary cycle low between March 15th and 20th. And from those lows, most rallied strongly into the close as of Friday, March 31st. In Asia and the Pacific Rim, this was the case with the Australia, Hang Seng, Nifty, and Nikkei indexes. But each of these is still well below their highs of the year. In China, a new low did not form March 15th and 20th, but Friday did see the SSE trade near its high of the prior week. In Europe, all four indexes we track also rallied smartly from their lows of March 16th to 20th to multi-week highs on Friday. The German DAX was especially strong, reaching 15,659 and closing in on its high for the new year on March 7th at 15,706. 
The Americas also saw sharp rallies. Of most interest was the Nasdaq futures, which posted its highest mark since mid-August of 2022. Technology stocks had been the leader, which wasn't surprising since Thursday was the conjunction between Venus and Uranus technology, in Taurus, money and securities. But that aspect is passing now, and the market is becoming overbought. In other markets, crude oil followed the same path as stocks, that is, a primary cycle low, and the lowest price since December 2021, at 64.36 back on March 20th. But then it commenced a 16% rally into a high of 75.72 on Friday, March 31st. Silver was similar, and from a primary cycle low of 1994 on March 8th, it soared to a high of 24.31 on Friday, a gain of nearly 22%. However, it is still below its yearly high of 24.77 on January 3rd, whereas gold made a new yearly high the prior week on March 20th at 2014.90. It's a case of mixed divergences. Bitcoin was strong, soaring to 29170 on Thursday, its highest price since June of 2022. Short-Term Geocosmics This from Fox Business on March 20th. According to the Nonpartisan Government Accountability Office, more than 90% of audits are on families and small businesses below the $400,000 income threshold. And then this from March 29th, CNBC, it says, Red Flags for an IRS Tax Audit. This tax season, there have been heightened concerns about IRS audits as the agency begins to deploy its nearly $80 billion in funding. While the IRS plans to hire more workers, including enforcement experts, experts say there is no need to worry as long as you keep proper documentation. Still, certain red flags are more likely to trigger an IRS audit, experts say. Round numbers are a dead giveaway. End quote. This year's tax season may be a mess, according to geocosmic signatures and their association with human activity. The solar eclipse of April 19th and 20th will form a hard square with Pluto, the planet of taxes and debt. This is just one day after tax filings are due on April 18th, and also just one day before Mercury turns retrograde in the middle of Taurus, the sign of money. With Mercury retrograde and the large increase of IRS agents, it is conceivable that there will be more audits than in the past. It's also conceivable that there will be more errors in reporting than usual. Taxpayers would be well advised to check and double-check their forms before filing. The tax season also corresponds to another tight gathering of several important geocosmic signatures on April 11th through the 21st. For one, the Sun will conjoin Jupiter in Aries on April 11th, the same day that Venus will enter Gemini and trine Pluto in Aquarius. We may get a preview of the coming renaissance I've talked about in this column when Uranus and Pluto trine each other from 2025 to 2028. For now, we need to pay attention to the fact that stock prices have rallied sharply into the Venus-Uranus conjunction in Taurus late last week. With this aspect, you never know if it's a breakout or a reversal. Other than the NASDAQ and the German DAX, no markets are near multi-month highs, so a pullback is certainly a possibility, unless equity indexes gap up next week, which means they open above the high of this past week and stay above there all week. A weekly gap up is a sign of a bullish breakout. If markets are higher next week, then we look for them to continue their rallies into the Sun-Jupiter conjunction of April 11th, and even the solar eclipse of April 19th and 20th. We will discuss this further in our weekly subscription reports tomorrow, which have been very hot on the strategies for traders in stocks and cryptos. Longer-term thoughts from Peggy Noon in the Wall Street Journal. It's crucial that we understand the dangers of this technology before it advances any further. People are quoting Arthur C. Clarke. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Thanks for the quote, Peggy Noonan. It perfectly describes the parallel paradigms of Pluto and Aquarius, which has just gotten underway as of March 23rd, 
as presented in last week's online Astro Data Conference. The URL for that is astrodata.com. That is, Pluto in Aquarius signifies both a stunning renaissance driven by technology and innovation, as well as the threat of war and a collective case of psychological dissociation, where the need for intimacy and close, supportive human contact is severely challenged by the advancements in technology, such as artificial intelligence, AI. AI does present fascinating investment possibilities, but first we need to resolve the threats of aggression by some world leaders who are obsessed with holding on to their own personal power and are willing to sacrifice the lives of hundreds of thousands of people, including their own populations. The last few instances where Pluto entered Aquarius and Neptune entered Aries and Uranus entered Gemini, it corresponded within months to the three most important conflicts in U.S. history the American Revolutionary War, the American Civil War, and World War II. These ingresses are taking place again between now and 2025. But similar cosmic configurations were also present throughout the 15th century, which corresponds to the great Italian and European Renaissances. So there is hope. But there is also a clear and present danger that is likely to be visible between the solar eclipse of April 19th and 20th and the Mars-Jupiter-Pluto T-square of May 16th to 23rd. Let's hope our world leaders choose the Renaissance path over that of destruction. And that's the conclusion of this week's newsletter. If you like the depth and breadth of Ray's knowledge and his writing style, which is great, Remember, we have two audio books out this year. Forecast 2023 is the mundane portion of the 2023 forecast of the year. And then Trends 2023 is what we're doing the book club on. And the book club is under the website funastrologybookclub.com. Real easy there, and it just takes you to a link of everything. It's also on the website, but that other link is pretty easy to remember. Fun Astrology Book Club, if you'd like to check that out. Tell you what, from my own personal perch, I was busy trying to get an audiobook out this week, so I didn't pay a lot of attention to all of this. I saw it as it was happening, but I was just too tied up and focused elsewhere. I like the way he left it, though, that Venus conjoining Uranus on Thursday was obviously a highlight point of this move, and yet now it will be separating. I know a lot of you have maybe been sitting on some 401k money or money that you've got set aside and you're just a little bit nervous to put it in this volatility. And as he was saying that if it does gap up and continue, then maybe this is a point place of reallocation. I know for myself, as I pull out and look at the longer perspective chart, the daily chart, even the weekly chart, a six hour chart, whatever bigger perspective time frame, you haven't missed the boat. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. I was one at one time, but that license has expired and I'm not using it now. So this is not financial advice. I'm just saying that when I zoom out, my eyes see that there could be more room to go up if that's the way the market chooses to go. Yesterday, the action on Friday was definitely driven by the market makers. Not There wasn't all this money pouring into stocks. See, this is the mirage of the markets. Month end and quarter end is when the portfolio managers clean up their books, but it's also when the banksters clean up their books. And they, they basically, what they did yesterday was a big short squeeze. Because if you look at a chart, you can actually go back to February 23rd and you will see a lot of trading that happened below the price that closed on Friday. Well, what the banksters just did is they ran the price way away from that. So people that were short had to get out and that's what continued to perpetuate the movement up. They basically bank on that. They count on the fact that sh people that are sitting short on the short side of the market will have to sell out as they drive, as they spike the price up. So that's what it was. It was the banksters. So we'll see what their game is next week, as he said. But for you and me, who are just trying to uh, stay ahead of inflation here, could we possibly be seeing an elevation that of a trend that might continue? Well, that's what Ray was saying. 
and the astrology could support that, as he was saying. And the other side of the coin, as he very clearly mentioned, is where Pluto is in this upcoming eclipse on April 20th. And we will be talking about that quite a bit Monday night. And thank you guys for those of you who responded favorably to yesterday's podcast. That was very heartfelt. But what I would add to that for today, don't be caught unconscious. Don't let a 401k statement that looks better than it did last weekend lull you into that everything is okay. We have a lot of astrology, and there are just, as he mentioned, a lot of agendas that are playing out right now, and all of this is colliding. Have you seen what's going on in France? You haven't if you're watching the mainstream media, but what they're upset about in different forms is being implemented now in Canada. They're talking about it here in the United States on several fronts. England is on a tinderbox. They're looking at their neighbors saying, okay, you guys are leading the, the charge here. We're right behind you. And the macro astrology supports all of that. So just stay vigilant. That's the message here. I love doing this podcast. I just got to tell you, I absolutely love it. I'm in here in the box at, uh, what, 5 o'clock on Saturday morning. There's a thunderstorm outside. I'm sipping on some tea, and I'm just loving doing this. So thank you for listening. We'll see you with Liz tomorrow and then back here on Monday. We'll do it all again and follow next week through. <laughs>